everyone. Today we will talk about uh, chemical reactions and enzymatic reactions. There are two, th two theories given, two major theories are given to predict uh, rate of chemical reactions. One theory is collision theory. As per this theory, this theory is mainly applicable for uh, uh, gaseous state when reactants are present in gaseous state. As per collision theory, reactant they come together, they collide with each other, as a result reaction take place. So it means rate of the reaction because molecules are in gaseous state, molecules are in Brownian motion. So when two reactant, two reactant molecule collide with each other, they, they combine together and form a product. So for such kind of reaction to enhance the rate of the reaction, there are two important factors which are required. First is concentration of reactant. If you have high concentration of reactant, there are more chances of uh, collision of molecules with each other and that's why rate of reaction gets higher, it increased. Similarly, the second factor is temperature. If you increase temperature, the motion of molecules increases. As a result, their collision frequency also increases. And eventually, when collision frequency is high, the probability of uh, converting uh, 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 substrate into product is become increased. The rate of reaction so can be increased by increasing concentration of reactant and temperature. Then, uh, but when two two molecule two reactant come together, just being together is not sufficient. First thing, they should come together in proper orientation and the required proximity. The distance between two two chemicals should be sufficient enough in order to carry out a productive reaction which can give rise to some product. And second, their orientation should be in proper direction. Your directional, uh, directionality should be in such a way so that the product formation can occur. Then uh, second very important thing is that the energy, the collision energy coming out from the collision of uh, chemicals should be sufficient enough to break the potential energy barrier, what, we, what is known as activation energy. So the collision will be only productive when the energy of the collision is sufficient enough, it should be at least equal to activation energy of the reaction. Otherwise, uh, it's, it will be non-productive collision. So if you summarize, the important factor here is concentration of reactant which determine rate of reaction as per the collision theory. Second, temperature. Increased temperature gives rise to uh, rapid increase in rate of the reaction. And the uh, analyte, your uh, chemicals, reactant should come in proper orientation and the required proximity. And important thing is that the energy should be sufficient and of the collision energy should be sufficient enough to overcome the potential energy barrier which is required in order to have a productive collision, in order to have the reaction to proceed into product formation. That's what can happen. But in case of solution, we know that enzymes, uh, they act in uh, aqueous state. Think about a cell. If you have a cell and uh, one enzyme is located at the cell membrane, for example, here, it doesn't move and product uh, reactant, the substrate for this enzyme is lying elsewhere in the cell. So how, how do these substrate reaches to the enzyme? The only scientific way known is through diffusion. Because this medium is aqueous liquid medium, the cell is there. Then these, product, these substrate molecules reach to, the, reach to the target enzyme through diffusion process. So diffusion is the only which governs uh, formation of uh, enzyme and substrate complex and diffusion is basically the movement of particles from high concentration to low concentration. So in cell, diffusion governs formation of a chemical reaction, biochemical reaction catalyzed by any enzyme. For a chemical reaction to proceed, the reactant chemical should have sufficient energy to overcome the potential energy barrier, what, what we call activation energy for that reaction. And this can happen, any, any, bio, any chemical reaction goes through, as per the theory of transition state theory, 
every chemical reaction they go through a transition state intermediate which is unstable in nature and when this transition state intermediate is splits down it gives rise to energy so splitting of the intermediate is favorable and that's how a reaction a reactant get converted into product so there are different type of catalysis which occurs like acid base catalysis covalent catalysis or metal ion catalysis all the enzymatic reactions or even any reaction which is catalyzed by any catalyst uh, the function of catalyst is to stabilize the transition state intermediate in case of acid catalysis the stabilization of transition state occurs by donating proton in base catalysis base take proton from from the intermediate in order to stabilize it in covalent catalysis covalent bonds forms which stabilize the intermediate or in case of in metal catalysis metal enzymes is a category where metal is required for enzymatic function so metal ion forms ionic interaction with transition state intermediate in order to stabilize this and uh, after stabilization because it's uh, temporary and uh, it is split down into product which give rise to energy so that become more favorable that's how even enzyme enzyme bring down activation energy by stabilizing transition state and this theory is most applicable to many of the reactions activation energy of a chemical reaction can be calculated using arrhenius equation as per this equation if we if we allow a chemical reaction to proceed at two different temperature and we have rate of reaction available for that reaction at two different temperatures we can calculate activation energy using this formula so activation energy ea is equal to 2.303 r where r is gas constant t1 t2 r2 temperature t1 t2 divided by t1 minus t2 into log base 10 vt1 divided by vt2 vt1 vt1 is the rate of the reaction at t1 temperature vt2 rate of the reaction at uh, t2 temperature if instead of uh, instead of rate of the reaction uh, rate constant of the reaction at two different temperature are available vt1 can be replaced by kt1 rate constant at uh, t1 temperature and vt2 will be replaced by rate constant at t2 temperature so that's how um, energy of activation of a reaction can be calculated so we will start to talk about uh, order of reaction in case of first order reaction uh, if you can imagine a reactant is being converted into product p so if the reaction is of first order the rate of the reaction would depend on concentration of the subst one substrate so means if you change concentration of a in the same proportion rate of the reaction should change if it is happening so the order of the reaction is called one first order reaction so v for the first order reaction would be equal to minus change in concentration of a da divided by dt per unit time because reactant is disappearing as the reaction is proceeding and product is increasing so that's why it is written da is written with minus sign minus da upon dt and uh, dp upon dt the product is being increased so it's with plus sign so the rate would be equal to k and concentrate into concentration of a reactant so here the k is rate constant of the first order reaction and the unit of the uh, this uh, rate constant of first order would be per second because unit of v is a molar per second and uh, a is unit of a is molar molarity molar so unit of k would be per second here if you plot a graph between rate of reaction and substrate concentration for a first order reaction it's always linear it's in proportional the rate of the reaction is in proportional to the increasing uh, reactant concentration one of the reactant concentration for a second order reaction rate of the reaction should depend on uh, two so two reactants or two molecule of the one reactant for example a and b they are two reactant they are being converted into product so rate of the reaction if it depend on the concentration of both a and b the reaction is called second order reaction and in this case the uh, v would be equal to rate constant concentration of a into concentration of b 
and hence the unit of k would be per mole per second and if you look at the graph of v versus concentration of a so it's not linear like in the first order reaction we depend on a but not completely it's partially dependent on the concentration of a some second order reactions are called first uh, uh, pseudo first order reaction if one of the reactant involved in the reaction is water because water concentration is too high in media change in water concentration will not change the rate of the reaction hence these reactions are called pseudo pseudo first order reaction if water is one of the reactant the, uh, another order is zero order reaction in case of zero order reaction the rate of the reaction does not depend on concentration of the reactant and in that case uh, the rate if you look at the graph the graph will be straight line so there is no change of v with respect to change in concentration of the reactant if reactant is a uh, after changing reactant uh, rate of the reaction remain constant and in such cases in zero order reactions the unit of k would be equal to unit of v which is mole per second.